what we need to do is actually okay so this broadcast should now be live on air I'm just gonna see if I can get some uh, some of the guys to make sure the link um, uh -huh. here we go okay buddy is there any way you could put this link from the reasonable wealth homepage um, available to the WhatsApp group so they can watch it now. We're just about to go live. In fact, we've gone live with me and Mark on the Google Hangout on air. Okay. So just ask Sam, who's my tech techie guy, as you probably realize now, to see yeah. if we can sort that out. Um, right. So here with Mark Berger, Tom Cassidy. It's the Reasonable Wealth program. Mark's from Reasonable Wealth 2, the, the, group, the WhatsApp group. But one of the things that he's very bravely volunteered to do is say that you know when he has a one-on-one -on -one, he's going to do it live so everyone can watch it and we can watch it later so Mark um, why don't you fire off first of all with uh, what you'd like to perhaps cover today and or anything else if you want to say a little bit about you or anything like that that you know anything that would be helpful well I'm very honored to be in this uh, live session here and I'm very honored to be in this group. Um, one thing that's come up in my in my awareness of lately is basically um, I think a lot of people deal with it, I deal with it a lot, is uh, anger um, and also um, self-sabotage. And I think in my life I think both of them kind of like carry off each other. You know I think that I get, you know, I allow my script to um, get me frustrated and I could, you know, get angry about, you know, when things don't go the way that what I'm realizing is the way that my script, you know, wants it to go. I think my script kind of like wants everything to be, you know, perfect and to be seen as something that I'm, you know, as, as perfect or whatever, and um, and I, I begin this lots of awareness in terms of you know dealing with you know like like with work. Um, you know, I work in a competitive environment, and when I'm not doing well, I'm comparing myself to others. I, I allow my script to get me angry. A lot of anger is geared, you know, basically at myself or at you know other people, or whatever. And um, it takes away from a lot of the progress that I made. So I could, I could do really well, and you know, if I have like a mishap or whatever, I tend to go right into the anger. Um, you know, um, I, I guess I can't have a, a short fuse at times, and uh, this is something that I, I've had since I was a child. You know, I was just having a, a temper, and as an adult. You know, I've gotten better at it, but, you know, um, anger is just something that I feel if, you know, having better awareness of it and then be able to have more self-control, I think that my life would be a lot more smoother. And I, and I think there's a lot of people that can benefit because I think a lot of people have anger issues. Um, yeah. You know, I was talking to one of, someone that I... I do recruiting, so I'm talking to someone that I place at a job, and she's telling me how her boss had to sort fuse, you know, and so I think it's something that's, you know, a very good topic, and something I like to discuss as well. Okay, fantastic. Um, anger is a big one for people, um, and I think that it's also a very destructive one, and some things that we experience can usually be contained they just make us feel bad you know we we feel a little bit down we feel a bit depressed we feel anxious and we okay th there are results for other people of these things but they are um, more indirect than direct and anger can have a very direct impact on the people around you and you can find yourself saying things that you would never choose to say to people that you love and even people that you don't love necessarily but you certainly don't hate them you can find yourself being incredibly cross and the classic example of anger I think for most of us is when we we shout at our kids we get really annoyed with them really frustrated with them because they're not doing what we expect and it's like you know we love these guys we love these kids 
uh, yet we find ourselves shouting at them. So I suppose the thing to do is let's for, let, let's go back. It's always good to talk of the um, to, to cover the general by actually talking about the specific instances. So let's take you back to the the last time you experienced or you noticed actually that you're angry because because you might have been angry and not noticed. But the last time that you actually noticed, you you felt the anger uh, and talk me through exactly what that was and what happened and what led led up to that. Okay, um, I do uh, recruiting as a profession, and I work for an agency. I work for an agency, so um, I find people jobs, put them on, you know, temporary contract jobs, and um, I had a person quit a job, and you know, my immediate reaction was I got angry, you know, because of the fact that I'm making money, and it took, you know, it's like when 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 someone's working a temporary job or a contract job, the way we get paid is we get paid every time, every hour they work. Yeah. So it's just it's been like a snowball effect. This this year, for some reason, I've lost um, a lot of people from from billing. So that's the most recent incidents where I just just get really angry. Okay, fantastic. So, um, so let's clip back to me. So, so you, you you got you got angry. You noticed it, and obviously, it was something that you didn't want, right? The last thing you yeah. wanted was for you to have a reduction in income. Correct. Okay. Now, so what I, what I'm going to try and do is say, in 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 terms of anger, um, anger is uh, really, I suppose it's a it, it's a reaction to things that. that Exist or are happening to you that you don't want. That's all it is. It's very, it, in its simplest term, that's what it is. Something is happening that you don't agree with, that isn't beneficial, that you don't see the benefit of, certainly. And as a result, you 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 respond with anger. Now, other people would respond differently. So the first thing to realise is: is the external event necessarily going to cause anger? Is that essential? Is it a requirement? You know, you have lost potential income out of this, absolutely. But is it necessary? Is it mathematical that when that happens, you should feel anger? No, it, it totally doesn't make any sense. It's not. Okay, so, sorry, go on, carry on, go on. It's not, you know, I've been doing this for a very long time, so I have people that come up a contract all the time. So yeah. I, you know, so it's basically it's, it's not practical. Okay, so it's something that happens all the time. It's annoying because it means a, a loss of revenue. Um, but I mean, and I'm I'm not really interested in playing the psychotherapist here yeah. and trying to work out why you're angry, right. um, or talking about where the anger comes from and to do with maybe your childhood and where you've got that bad temper from. I'm not interested in that. That's for psychologists, for psychotherapists, if you want to take your well-earned money and spend it on weekly sessions with a psychoanalyst and do that for the next 20 years, you're very welcome. That's entirely up to you. A lot of people do that, and uh, it, it works to a certain extent. It works like anything. It works while you're going to the analyst. It works while you're going to the psychotherapist. But what you've essentially done when you're doing that, if you, you've literally given all your power to something outside of you. Correct. And whenever you go to a coach or a psychotherapist, you've actually given your power to somebody else to solve the problem for you. Now, it turns out, and you know where I'm going with this, that that's exactly what your script wants. Exactly yeah. what your script wants is for the problem not to be something that is it or between you and it. He wants to be the problem that is sort of outside and it's solvable and let's get an expert in and then he will fix you. And the script will tell you that there's something wrong with you, something wrong with you that actually needs fixing. Now, irrespective of where that came from, irrespective of where the anger came from and all those things, first of all, you've got to decide, is this, okay, do you believe that there's actually something wrong with you? Or do you believe that your script exists and when you're in the script, you're going to be angry, and but as you wouldn't ever choose to be angry, it's not you, it's just your script. What do you believe about that? I believe it's the script that 
create. I've had such an awareness lately that I, I'm I'm not perfect, but I'm feeling it. You know, when what was going on with the script and everything, and it's pretty amazing. And but I do believe there's nothing wrong with me as a person. Um, I think it's definitely something that again in my script plays to create anger. Yeah, yeah. I believe you're completely right. I don't. I don't think there's anything wrong with anybody. It's just that we're most of us, most of the time, are following scripts that have been handed to us by our parents, by our childhood experiences, by when we compared ourselves with our brothers, our sisters, when we were in school. And it's not all doom and gloom. You know, they, they, there's lots of good things that got through. But in the metaphor of the script, and at the end of the day, all of this stuff, none of this stuff is real, right? These are. Um, I was trying to explain this today. I went through a thought experiment. I said, look, insects aren't real. There is no such a thing as insects. There are living things that have certain properties, and we look at all these living things, and we decide, actually, these things kind of look a little bit similar to other things. Let's come up with an idea, a way of grouping them that's helpful. We'll give them all a name because they've got some similar properties. And we'll say, well, kind of they've got sort of a segmented sort of body section, and they've sort of got six legs. So we're going to give these things a name. We'll call them insects, and that'll be helpful for other people for classifying things, for grouping things. It'll be useful. It'll be helpful. But there is no such thing that really exists in absolute terms as insect. We've just come up with that. We defined it because we thought it was quite helpful. Um, it might turn out that there are actually other ways to group animals and group those living tiny creatures with a bunch of legs that are actually more consistent or would work better in different cultures. We don't really know. So this is really interesting. You know, this idea of the script as a metaphor, it's not that it's real, it's just that it's helpful. Now, so when we define the script, we say the script is everything that isn't helpful in your life that doesn't make you feel good, that you wouldn't choose. And I learned this a long time ago from, um, from my mentor, my personal mentor, Richard Wilkins. And he was, for a long time, he was, trying to, he was trying to work out why people knew what to do but still weren't doing it. And he realized that, obviously, we've talked through this through Mark a, a couple of times already, and you get in it. Obviously, there are some things that you wouldn't choose to do, they're not helpful to yourself, like as you said, the anger isn't helpful, the, um, the rage that you feel isn't helpful, it doesn't make you feel good, and so you wouldn't choose it for yourself, but you're doing it as an automatic response. Now the, the big thing is, is you've got two ways to go on this, I'm just going to give you some really simple advice, you've got two ways to go. The first is to get really annoyed that it is still happening, because you've got this awareness now, so it shouldn't be happening anymore because you should know how to respond to external things, you should know how to not them not let those things make you angry. Or the second way is to not get really annoyed about these things. So it's as simple as that. That's what you get. We're not going to try and attack the anger right. because that's too hard to attack the anger. The anger is a logical consequence of what your script is doing. It's almost like it's very difficult very difficult to look at some beautiful ice cream and not want it. You look at this, I mean, my wife had some salted <laughs> caramel haagen ice cream today, right? Oh, yeah. I, did, I didn't try to not want it. I looked at it and I thought, yeah, that looks great. I don't want to fool myself and say, oh, it's not really so nice. Oh, you won't like it. You know, yeah. what? any of that stuff doesn't work. So all I did is I looked at it and said, that's, that would be really tasty. That would be really tasty. It's okay to really want that. It's absolutely okay to think that that would be awesome and to really want it. But it's also, it's okay to, despite wanting it, decide, actually, I'm okay with just wanting it. I don't actually have to have it. Now, you might say, that's a bit weird. Why don't you just eat it anyway, because it'll taste good. So I played the next trick, which was, and this is a little bit out there, so bear with me. A lot of people might be thinking, this guy's mental. But I said, all I did, as I was brushing my teeth, I was thinking, you know what, the last time I had that salted caramel ice cream, it was awesome. It was really good. I really enjoyed the taste of that. And kind of like a dream, I sort of relived that experience of how it tasted. I thought, wow, that was good. But guess what? I didn't have to live with also the fact that maybe I shouldn't have had it afterwards. I didn't have to live with the fact of, oh, you know what, 
you know, you're this Mr. Reasonable Eating, healthy sort of guy, you know, the last thing you want to be doing is putting on the pounds, especially as you've, you know, lost sort of 45 pounds or so in the last 12 months and you're looking really healthy. The last thing you want to do, I didn't worry about all that stuff. All I did was thought, you know, it's okay to want something. I kind of enjoyed remembering how it tasted, but didn't actually have to have it. So it's, it's almost the same thing. Let's not attack the anger. The anger is going to come anyway. That's going to come automatically. It's, oh. Now, first of all, you don't get annoyed with yourself for being angry. And then when you're okay with that, your awareness goes up. So after a while, these things, you go, you go through and say, actually, well, you know what? Do I even need to be angry about it? And that, that will come in time. If you go straight after the, oh, this is silly, you don't need to be angry, you get cross with yourself for being angry about stuff, don't you? Yeah. Right, okay. So, so that's the thing. So how, in terms of, uh, uh, back over to you now, Mark, in terms of awareness, you know, obviously your awareness has changed massively just over the last week or so, but can you see how attacking, attacking the being annoyed about being angry is much easier to deal with than actually attacking the anger itself? Yes, totally. It's a lot less... It's a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, what I what I tend to find with people is is the biggest problem is that their awareness is a certain level, and they have this belief system that they know they're better than this. They know that they shouldn't be being angry. They know that they have this awareness, especially as we start talking about these ideas. And so then, what happens is the script, your script, you wouldn't choose it. You don't want it it's not helpful, is making you angry. X happens outside of you, you can't, could you have actually really done much about that? Well, sometimes you might have been able to uncover the individual a little bit more and just work out and actually say, well, actually this placement's not going to be perfect for him. Yeah, maybe sometimes you could do that. Absolutely, I agree with that. But in general, there's going to be lots of times where you couldn't have done anything about it. It was an external event, right? So what the script does is that there is something outside which has happened around you and the script is saying, oh, on page 6,432,000, when something like this happens that is going to equal a loss of income to you, God, you should be really angry. That's what your script is saying. You'd never choose that. And you look at this, oh, yeah, anger. So, oh, so but then, then the script will say, oh, you know that it's not a good idea to feel angry, so you should feel bad about having been angry. Right. So it's <laughs> that's how you know it. That's how you know it's got to be a script. You would never choose that. You would never choose that for yourself. You would definitely never choose it for someone you love. You wouldn't choose it for your wife. You wouldn't choose it for any of your children. You wouldn't choose it for your. You wouldn't really even choose it for an enemy. You would say, "No, that wouldn't make any sense." What you do is. The thing exists, you can't control it, the script makes you feel angry about it, and then noticing the anger makes you feel bad about feeling angry. Right, and this is not but acknowledging that you have the anger, but not engaging in the anger. And I think that that's really the you know one of the keys. You know, from my, I, I could see, you know, um, I've definitely have gotten a lot better. And uh, but this is to, what I'm getting out of this is basically, all right, I, the external circumstance is that the guy quits a job. My script reaction is anger. I acknowledge the anger, and the anger is there, but my choice is basically don't engage in the anger. Knowledge is there, and just move on, because I'll find somebody else. It's not going to be the end of the world. I'm not going to die. You know, that's, it sounds like, you know, it's very easy to, to do. Um, it's, it's of course much easier to um, to think about in absolute terms, and that's why I say it's much easier to then attack the feeling bad about being angry rather than being angry. Being angry is one of those kind of fight or flight um, type emotions, isn't it? It's like a heat of the moment. It's just very instant. You know, you. I don't think I'll ever reach a stage in my life where I'm walking down the street and I see a girl walking past who looks great, and I don't think, whoa. I don't think I'll reach that stage. It's like it's like it's animal. It's like whoa, or, or see some ice cream and go whoa, that looks good. Or just the, these things. Or or someone really shouts at you and you don't feel bad. I don't think you can do much about those things. 
they're just just automatic. Uh, but what we can do is we can certainly certainly control the then feeling bad because the then feeling bad about something is exists over a much longer period of time. Right. The anger happens instantly, and I think, ah, oh, okay. What if it was okay to be angry as long as you don't punch anyone? Or you know, really, what if it was okay to be angry for a minute when bad things happen to you, or when things that you don't want happen to you? What if it was okay to be angry? How how would you feel if it was actually okay to be angry? Would be fine, you know. <laughs> you know, if it's okay to be angry, it'd be okay, you know. But you know, as long as you just feel it and then don't act on it, you know, because of the feeling. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. It's a feeling, but if it's okay, if you're okay with being angry and you're not fighting the anger and you're sort of accepting, it, and I don't want to get too technical about this, and I don't want to get because that's you're starting to sound like a counselor when you say you just embrace it, and you know, <laughs> I, I don't I don't want to do any of that stuff. I just want to say, look, is it possible for you to be okay with being angry and noticing the fact that you're angry? Is it okay for you to be possible with that? And if yeah. it is if it is okay. For you to do that, do you think it would be helpful for you to do it? So, like, so I suppose, in general terms, first of all, we've got to have the wisdom, the awareness, call it, that it's possible to do something about it and to notice it. Then, yeah. secondly, we've got to have the willpower to want to do something about it. So, you've got to actually direct your awareness. So, you've got the awareness, then you've got to direct it to something that is helpful to you, um, and then. Finally, I suppose when it comes to the uh, comes to the crunch, you know, when we talk about the sausage machine of life, right. um, what you want to do is you want to get your little army of thought engines creating the sorts of thoughts that you want. You know, you want them building roads to the calm, the balanced mark. You want them building roads to the the mark who can handle things without being angry, or if he is angry from time to time, it's not so much of a big deal. So. Basically, how you do that is you've got to see yourself as someone who can do this. See yourself as someone who isn't bothered if they get angry from time to time. See yourself as someone who actually, when things happen to you, you change your perspective a little bit and you just see things as happening around you. Not to you. This is around you. Some things happen. This person that had a job no longer has the job. You don't make any money out of that. But that's something that's happened around you. It right. didn't happen to you. To you right. is a victim mentality. Around you is an observer, observational. So it happened around you. Now, it is bad in absolute terms in the short term because you're receiving less income as a result. Mm -hmm. But we don't actually know that in the in the when all the checks and balances of the whole universe have taken place, by the time you look at your future and where you will go as a result, and look at that guy's future and that company's future and your company's future, we don't actually know whether that was a bad thing. We don't know that the next person you find to fill that job won't be someone that stays with you for 10 years. Right. Right. So actually, depending on how you measure it, we don't know whether it's good or bad. So. If we were applying logic to it, you'd say, well, actually, okay, it looks like to me like I didn't want that. But I don't actually know that that isn't a good thing for me and not a bad thing. Hmm. It might be a bad thing, but I don't know that. Right. So given that I don't even know that it's necessarily a bad thing in the long run, yeah. uh, would I choose to be angry about it? No. I mean, one, I told you my story about the other day when I was on the, um, on the airplane flight. Did I not tell you that one about um, when I was four and a half hours delayed? No. Okay, so super quickly. The other, <laughs> the, other, the other day I had a flight back from a consulting gig I'd been doing. And I was, I'd been away for four days and I really don't like being away from my family at all because the, you know, the kids are still young, I don't like that. And I came back and it was a Friday night and I was due to get in about half past eight so I'd have seen them before they, they went to bed. I'd been away all week and they're super excited about it. Turns out the flight was delayed. Ended up being four and a half hours late. You know, I could have driven home in about that time. But I was chatting to the stewardess and I was saying, okay, um, so um, so it must be tough for you guys because you just all of a sudden have to do this overtime because, you know, we, we were in Newcastle and to fly down to London and then fly back on the London flight back to Newcastle still. So 
these guys were already going to be four and a half hours late. You know, they wouldn't be back home to like four or five in the morning. I said, I must be really tough for you guys. You know, thanks very much for staying. And you know, obviously, no one wants to be delayed and all that sort of stuff. And the lady said to me, Oh, I wish all our customers could be like you. And I said, Hey, lady, I'm not doing this for your benefit. I'm not being nice for you. I'm being nice because I, because being nice makes me feel good. It's already bad enough that I'm four and a half hours delayed. The last thing I want is to also feel bad about it. Right. Got right. You. Yeah. Now, now, <laughs> that, see, that seems incredibly logical, but you need quite a lot of awareness to be able to say, okay, a bad thing has happened. Something that I didn't want has happened. But if I also feel bad as a result of that bad thing, it's like two wrongs. Two wrongs don't make a right. That's yeah, that's exactly. dumb. That's insane. I know, but but when you think of it like that, logically, it makes total and utter sense. So why don't we do that? We don't do it because in the script, page six million four hundred thirty-two thousand <laughs> the script will say something like, "Oh, when bad things happen around you, or bad things happen to you, you should feel bad." Right. Oh, that's exactly when you want to feel good. Because something bad has happened that is kind of annoying. So you want to feel good. You want to think about your wife or about your children or think about, well, you know what? I'm still not dead or it's not raining or something like that. You want to draw on all your strength. It's like another one is in, in relationships. You know, when, when someone walks away from you in a relationship, someone you loved, you didn't want them to walk away from you, they leave you, it's a bad thing as far as you're concerned. That is not good. That is a bad thing. You didn't want that to happen. The absolute last thing you want to do is feel bad as well, but what do we do? We feel miserable about it. And I, it, it took me two years probably with my first marriage to to get over maybe not maybe more than that to get over the fact that you know I wasn't really being able to see my kids and it was just like a disaster and all this sort of stuff. And this is a terrible thing. And the script was saying, oh yeah, in a in a breakup marriage, if you can't see your kids, you should feel terrible. You're not a good dad. You should have worked harder. You should have been a better husband. You should. It will say all this sort of stuff. Now, it's already bad that I wasn't able to see them. The last thing I want to do is feel bad. And so you, it makes total sense to do that. But the script will say, yeah, but you can't do that. I mean, right now, what's your script saying to you about what I'm saying? <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> I mean, you have to be angry, you know, this isn't, this isn't, this is nonsense, you know, like, uh, you know, it's, what is he talking about, you know, like, I'm pretty sure he gets angry and stuff, you know, and yeah. it's, it's just nonsensical. Absolutely, absolutely, so the thing is, the fact that you've, you've spotted what the script would be saying makes it a lot easier for you to then see it when it actually does start saying things like that. And that's that, that, That's a great thing, so you say, okay. Tom's saying all this sort of stuff, you know. Now, yeah, it makes sense to me, but yeah, but yeah, but this is nonsense. When bad stuff happens, you should feel angry. It'll be better. Look, if you want to feel angry, Mark, if what you would choose is anger, because that helps you deal with it and get it out of your system, as long as you're not violating the principles of life and you're not, you know, um, hurting anybody or being mean to anybody, if your anger helps you deal with it and it works well, be angry. It's just when you're doing what you wouldn't choose. If you don't want to be angry and you're being angry, it's your script. But right. if, if you if you want to feel bad because you think it'll be good for you overall, you know, maybe you do, that's fine. If it genuinely is you wanting to feel bad and say, you know what, I'm going to get hammered. I'm just going to go and feel miserable for a day because I know that when I do that, I come out right the other end and I feel totally balanced. If that is actually beneficial for you, and I'm not here to judge on what is. All I'm here to do is say, look, if you have noticed that you're doing something that you don't find helpful, that isn't working for you, that doesn't make you feel good or doesn't make you feel the way you want to at that time, then that's not you. It's your script. So you can feel bad. You can feel angry. You can feel all those things if you are aware and decide to do it. You can do whatever you like. There's no right or wrong, provided you are in the, provided you're not violating the principles of more life to all, um, which is that ultimately, you know, all, all, all the major religions, all the laws of nature, saying you know, you can't really kill other people. That's, you know, that that's generally a no-no. 
you can't really make other people feel bad. But if for you, it just helps you deal with things to be angry for 10 minutes, to go and hit a punch bag and do that, and then it's out of your system. Now, I would question whether if you are a high enough awareness, you probably say, well, actually, yeah, I might want to do that, but it's my script probably telling me that that's, my, that's the best way of dealing with things. Because actually, you know, when I am angry, it's only my script telling me that if you do this, then you'll feel better and that's your best way of doing things is the way to solve it. Is I might not choose for that. But anyway, I don't want to get into the psychotherapy. I don't want to get, I just want to stop at that. Okay, what would I choose? Okay, if the answer's yes, then it's you. If the answer's no, you wouldn't choose it. And so, let, should, should we skip quickly on to the, the second one? Because I, I think I think we've more or less covered anger. Do you want to go I with the... I've definitely got a lot, you know, covered anger. So, another thing is, uh, you know, self-sabotage. And, um, I, you know, give you an example of uh, self-sabotage in my life is that uh, just as, you know, 2013, I had a great year. Um, financially, in my, in my job, I'd been there for a year and a half. 2014, terrible. And every single thing good that happened, uh, I self-sabotaged somehow, and that's what really lit, and then all of a sudden, this program came up, <laughs> just like, and I've been asking, you know, for, for something, but the self sabotage is something that, that takes away from the good progress that I make, and then somehow, the minute something negative would happen, then the script goes on saying, I'm no good, you know, you suck, you're terrible, you know, everything. And it just takes it away, and then, what happens is it gets is it becomes a snowball effect and everything, and um, and I feel you know that with this awareness I'm getting, that you know sometimes you know I'm I'm really get into this observation and awareness of feeling, and I'm seeing like I'm getting more aware of like my script saying you know like what are you saying? <laughs> I think you're full you're full of it. This is this isn't you, you know. Because I, I, um, my thing is I, I have, I have a lot of problems with suppression. I suppress my feelings and suppress my thought, my, my real me. And uh, I went through life like that, but now it's like it's coming out. And now my self sabotage thing is like, I like the old way better. You know, <laughs> so that's my thing about self sabotage right now. Okay. Okay. Brilliant. Let's let's go through a few things very quickly then. Um, so self sabotage. Um, first of all, can you prove that you are actually self sabotaging? Um. Yeah. What's going on? Then. Go on then. Give me an example. Um. Well, actually, I don't think it's me. It's not me. I think it's my uh, my awareness. Is telling me that basically, well, you know, I had a great year, and in coming to this year, I just got complacent, and um, you know, my now as I'm thinking about it, like my script is telling me, oh, you know, you did so well, you don't need to work as hard, you don't need to do this, you need to make the phone calls and everything, and I just show up to work. Yeah, that sounds like the script. Yeah, absolutely. And then what does it do when you just follow its advice? Well, it it kind of like leads into, you know, um, being at work and not working, just, just being there, like just showing up, just um, not trying as hard. Um, and then before you know it, you know, like, like the month of January, like no placements. So for the, I had one the very last day of January. So, uh, but the script is like feeding and feeding and, and, and making me feel like, you know, last year was not real. You know, you're not your failure. It wants to did a failure thing, and yeah. um, I'm not deserving of it. Yeah, and it will say that it was luck last year. And, it was luck. You know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, listen, um, you know sales better than me, of course. My experience in sales is only for a few years. But my experience in sales was very much that a lot of it was quite random. 
and that you only got um, consistent, well, you know, you got the laws of large numbers averaging out over quarters and years, but on a particular month, monthly basis, you could have quite significant differences. That was my experience. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know, it depends. If you're, if you're selling very low ticket things, then they would tend to average out more so that you, may, you might have good weeks and bad weeks, but because you're doing so many more transactions. But if you've got a low transaction uh, business, then you're likely to have these spikes. Um, if you're selling helicopters, you might only need to sell like one or two a year, right? And then, then um, and you probably do okay. But, but, and so you might have three years where you don't sell any, and then a fourth year you sell like five or six. So that's part of it anyway. But the second thing is really interesting is your script talked you into uh, not actually not, not actually um, doing as much in January because we had a great year last year. It talked you into not doing as much, yeah, right? Yep. And then when you didn't do as much, it started beating you up for saying, oh, actually, you know, you know, you should have done more, or what were you doing, you know, oh, it's just luck, actually, so now, you know, you need, and then it says, oh, you've got into a habit of just showing up and all this sort of stuff. It's really interesting. You, you know it's got to be a script, because it encourages you to do something, you take its advice, and then it beats you up for it. It's just like, what the <laughs> hell? It's like, ima imagine if that was your partner, or imagine if that was your boss. They tell you to do something, and then you do it, and then... One of the things that I've been uh, coming up with recently is this idea of, look, I don't see myself as a coach. You've already got a coach. We talked about this the other day, didn't we? You've already got a coach that you're listening to all the time. It's called your script, and it's a crap coach. It's just, li it's just making you do stuff every single day that probably isn't helpful, that you know, isn't great. You know, it tells you to do something, you do it, it then criticizes you for it. You'd fire yeah. a coach if you had a coach like that, right? Yeah, it would. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be bothered. So one of the things that I do is we try to say, look, look, we're kind of an anti-coach or we're uncoaching. We're trying to actually get you away from listening to the coach that you've got already, which is your your internal script. Now, if you were aware of your script more, and you every single time it said something about work, you could just go, ah, uh ah, -huh. uh, that's the script. <laughs> that's the script, right? <laughs> I had to, can I say something? Yes, of course. Um, it happened today. You know, I uh, um, I went to work. I, I'm today for three I was feeling like really, really positive and great and everything. And then um, when I search for for a particular, I'm searching for this replacement for this person that quit. And I've been working on it for the past two or three days without making any progress because my script was really taken over. So I said to myself, I said to my script, I said, listen, all right, what you did didn't work. I'm going to do it this way. And I actually, you know, whenever it was coming up, like telling me I'm, you know, I'm doing it stupid or whatever, I did the opposite. I actually made phone calls. I got a hold of people. I got one referral from somebody. But I asked questions. You know, I, I went against what my script was saying, and actually the result actually was – Quite better, <laughs> you know. I think I walked out today, like you know, hey, I got, I got a referral. I got a guy submitted for a job. I got you know another guy who's gonna send me a resume tomorrow. So in three days, Thursday, last Thursday, Friday, Monday, four days, no resumes. Today, I have one solid one submitted. I got another guy in the works. I got referrals. So I have three potentials all in one day that I took me four days just to fight with. And I, you know, and it just, you know, that, that phone was like, wasn't even, you know, they say the phone weighs 50 pounds, the phone weighed nothing, you know, just, we're, we're, we're like, I would see a resume and my script would say, not qualified. I was like, I'm going to call him up, because he might know somebody. And then, lo and behold, the guy gave me a referral. So it, it definitely, I could see where the, the script process was playing, you know, with my, you know, with my self-sabotage. Self yeah, I suppose the thing that I'd like to say is that self-sabotage is got in its own language. It's got something which makes you want to accept a part of the blame for it. Right. And so, so what I want to encourage is when I say, can you prove it's self-sabotage, my question is really, actually, it's not self-sabotage at all. You would never choose to sabotage yourself. So all it is is script sabotage. Your script is trying to sabotage you because it knows that you don't like rejection. 
so it tries to prevent you from being rejected. Right. It, know, it knows that you don't like failure, so it says, well, maybe it's better to not try so hard because then you won't fail. And if you fail just because you failed, fine. But if you try and then you fail, that would be cruel. That would be awful. You wouldn't be able to deal with that. It will say stuff like that. I think when, my, when I worked in sales, I, I thought it was amazing knowing about the script and having that awareness because sales is like a huge amplifier for awareness for your script it's just amazing because sales is on the line in front of people you know rejection at every opportunity you know I don't reckon people who are actuaries in a in a business where they don't have to deal with anybody at all where all they deal, deal with is numbers and probability and chance I don't think they encounter the same things from a script as we do if we're in the sales, if we're in a people business. Right. And especially when you're in a sales business where you have to talk to people all the time. How many opportunities every single day are the script to talk you out of doing something and to just say, so oh no, don't do that because well oh yeah, don't call him because he's not qualified. Oh that's not going to work. This guy won't take the job. Oh he wouldn't work there because you spoke to him and he said, hey, so what I would do, here's a little tip, right? Mm -hmm. I apply this algorithm all the time and I love being a contrarian, I love being the opposite of what everyone else is doing. I say, notice when the script is saying something and exactly as you did Mark, do the opposite, do exact opposite because then it's almost like saying, if your master coach is exactly wrong for you, then the opposite of it is exactly right. <laughs> it's, right? This is so simple, I mean it's just... Uh... And one thing I'm noticing also is the when the other person that you're talking to is in the script as well. Like I'm getting the yes. awareness of people when they're in a script, and just like and I'm seeing it like in the office because like I mean you know part of this you know the science getting rich course is the is the competitors. Yeah, competitors. Yeah, I work with. <laughs> <laughs> competitors, you know, and I'm seeing how how they are, and like I, it's just, you know, and, the, and it's just a script that they that they do and everything, and then you know, you know, with the with the phone call when I'm talking to somebody, and you know, there's one guy, you know, like when my script said don't call him, I called him, but and I spoke to him, I thought that he was in the script, and I got him out of script, one he was in script, which I thought was remarkable in my behalf, because like. Wow. I got someone out of script, and I was like, and then he opened up to me, and just like, all right, you know, this is cool, you know, just helping, you know, get, you know, getting the real truth out of somebody, and uh, so I um, just want to share that, share that uh, event, that awareness. The um, the astonishing thing is, Mark, is that you're like a week or maybe ten days into this awareness, and you're already having these breakthroughs. Now, it doesn't fix the entirety of everything that happens around you. Knowing about the script, having awareness, knowing about the sausage machine, knowing about the more you think of something, the easier it gets. Having these algorithms, you know, knowing that I need to just focus on one thing at a time, all that sort of stuff doesn't fix the world around you that happens around you. But what it does do is it gives you the power to control ultimately what you want, which is the feelings that you get as a result. And if you, if, if you can just think of your job as just noticing the script and noticing the script in other people, as you did today, you will find that you've got this mercurial talent for spotting when other people are in their script and just being able to go straight to the heart of it and get them out of their script just with great questions. Or just you know, your awareness is like gold dust in the sales environment because you know exactly what to say. When someone's in the script, you know what it's like when you're in your script and what are we trying to teach in sales all the time? Empathy, right? Yeah. Now, just because people don't know that there is a script doesn't mean they haven't got one and they aren't in it a lot of the time, right? In fact, they no not knowing about it is kind of like, well, that's almost an advantage for you because you know that they've got a voice in their head that's talking them out of being the greatest version of themselves and all that sort of stuff. You know that there's fear that they've got. You know that there's uncertainty. You know that they believe they can do more. You know all that stuff because so do I. So do you. So do all of us.
So you can actually have incredible level of empathy with this newfound awareness that you've got. And it's actually very exciting. I think the sales is probably the biggest opportunity for people to suddenly get massive breakthroughs because it's 100% people focused. So you're in the laboratory of real life every single day with hundreds of people's scripts and hundreds of people's interactions with you. And so as a result, you're doing experiments at a much faster rate than anybody else in any other industry. So you, the progress you make will be why you're, you know, you're flying at this is because you're getting so many more exposures to noticing and to other people. And it's really exciting. Anyway, um, the self-sabotage thing, I, I think we need to do a lot more on that because we're coming up to about an hour now and it's, um, it's, it's kind of, I think what we want to do is want to say, look, it's not you self-sabotaging, it's the script, so don't worry about it. The script well, how about is... script sabotage? Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's, it, <laughs> exactly, it's script sabotage. But there's a lot of things that we can help with why the script comes at you with that. And I'll be doing a lot more about self-sabotage when it comes to your own career and your business success and all these things because... Um, most of the most of the script sabotage comes from the lines in the script that say actually uh, it's not okay to have a lot of money. It's not okay to be wealthy because deep down that means that you're taking away from somebody else, and you don't see yourself as a bad person, and so deep down it's difficult for you to actually go along with something if you think that that will mean that you're taking away from other people because that will make you a bad person because you're kind of preventing other people so there's a huge amount of script stuff on that and it all comes from uh, from I suppose misunderstanding from not understanding abundance from believing in scarcity and not abundance but there's so many layers in the script if you want to start putting the good stuff into the sausage machine it helps to kind of not explore it to change it but to explore it to realize well actually there are ways to it, to look at the world differently that allow me more freedom to think what I would choose to think. Give me more permission that it's okay. You know, Tom just saying something is not going to be enough for you. So quite a lot of the time we do need to, instead of just saying, well, what would I choose? Yeah, okay, what about, what about the science behind it? What about the future? What about the people that believe in this way? You know, the most successful people they have the same doubt as us, they still have scripts, but they're just somehow, usually, able to do things despite their scripts. And, and if you've got this ability to realize that your script is telling you exactly useless things or unhelpful things, that's a real head start because, as I say, just do the opposite of whatever that little voice is saying. Just say, okay, you're saying that, so if I do the opposite of that, because it's almost, it's like Gollum in Lord of the Rings, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Where it just... He wants to keep you and my and all that sort of well, stuff. Yeah, my, my brother sent me a, uh, a recording. It's a, bad, it's a bad recording, but it's in that voice, you know? <laughs> Lord of the Rings guy. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I, I, I get it. Okay, buddy. So, listen, thanks very much for doing this call. Um, yeah. we've, we've covered anger and script sabotage. Uh, basically, you've agreed that, you know, Awareness is the golden ticket to the rest of your life, and uh, you're you're in an environment where you do get an opportunity. So you'll have what sales is like is like this. It's like up and down a lot more. So what happens is for most people's lives is like this. Sales for most people is like this, but for you right now it's like this. Yep. So you still have ups and downs, but the overall trend. In right. awareness and in feelings and all that stuff is is going up, which is awesome. So, any any final words or anything to say to, to anybody? Well, I just want to say that you know, for the past you know, however long we're doing this, I've I'm beginning to get really in touch with with who I am, and I encourage anybody to basically take the the first step myself, which was. Awareness, you know. I think awareness and, ob and observing, and and also just, you know, like we've been saying, like, is this something that I would choose? You know, because like 
if I it's something I want to choose, I'm getting really in touch with, with what I want, it starts coming, you know, and it's it's it comes in subtle ways, but I feel a lot better, I feel a lot more empowered. And I think the main thing also is that the amount of energy that I have is just is ridiculous. Like I'm not I'm like full of energy, you know, and like I didn't know where it was coming from. I think it's I'm tapping into my higher source. You know, I'm tapping into something greater than me that's not me, and and it's a script because I, if you feel or whatever, I know when I feel like tired and you know lethargic or whatever, I know that it's like my and the voice is like I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired, you know. And, but I, it's it's middle of the day. How can I be tired in the middle of the day or whatever? But then you take it away. It's a script, like saying I'm tired. So yeah, yeah it's yeah. very it's very fundamental. It's very easy. It's very basic, and it's life. You know, this is like for me, this is like living, and everything else just it's just words. And this is just like so simple, but we can make it so complicated because we have something called you know the script. That you know is my negative coach. You know, it's just yeah. uh, anti-coach, <laughs> anti-coach. Yeah. So um, be aware. Is, yeah, interesting. So, and and how are you finding the? I know you're quite active in the in the mastermind groups on WhatsApp. How are you finding that aspect? I think the mastermind group is definitely you know the icing on the cake because like it's great to have. This awareness, but what am I doing with it? You know, I'm just keeping it to myself. But if I'm sharing and telling people about it, it actually, you, f you know, for me because I, I'm in a I'm a 12 step program, and one thing I learned is that you gain a lot more by giving it away. And when mm -hmm. you give it away, it's just like, you know, you feel a lot better, and and then also seeing other people benefit from it is really like adds like. I don't know the effect is just like twice as much. So the mastermind, you know, the whole entire group. I like, you know, at, at first my script was saying to me like, yeah. "You're stupid. This is stupid. Who's gonna believe it? This, this type of stupid stuff. You can be annoying. You're, you're annoying people. Like, no one wants to read what you're doing. No one wants to read you woke up or whatever. But you know what? I'm going against the script, so I'm going to say, you know, how I feel. I feel great, and I'm feeling better doing it. And you know what happens? Is that my script is losing power, and then like it's empowering, and and I'm seeing it's it's also contagious. So I, I just I encourage, I mean this is a, a a really open source type of form in which, you know, and it, because I I think people say because something's free or whatever they take it for granted, but the time is now. You know, that's one thing I'm learning. Just vote it out. You know, just say it. You know, say how you feel, and and that and that's been helping. I think that uh, you know the, the WhatsApp uh, mastermind thing. I think is like putting this on steroids, really like taking this off and everything. So I'm every time I'm, I have something that I want to share, instead of keeping it to myself, I'm putting on a script. I'm also I've been um, doing some uh, voice memos on my phone because I get so excited to get it. record it, you know, and I want to hear myself later, like yeah. you know, oh wow, that was a great insight, you know. And, I have ideas that are stuff I want to do that my script wouldn't even want me to, to have, but I, I, I just share about it, you know? So, yeah, definitely, definitely awesome stuff. You're, you're on fire, mate. I mean, I this is actually only, it's only about 10 days, maybe, maybe no, it's about two weeks, isn't it, since we yeah. um, first spoke only. So it's um, yeah. two weeks. And, I mean, I hate saying stuff like this because people listening won't really believe it and also it, your script will say well what was I like before but you're a completely different person now just in two weeks completely different your energy is through the roof uh, you didn't have a clue what you wanted to do two weeks ago and um, it's really incredible just um, I'm humbled to see that you see you know that what you're doing is working by the results it gets in other people and one thing I want to say is I'm not worried about the how anymore, which is something that was really crippling. The yeah. how is like the biggest thing that like basically just kept me stuck. I yeah. think I think it was one of the first things I, we talked about, but yeah. I don't worry about it, I just do. 
you know, and yeah. it's going everything's good because everything is happening. I'm glad we're recording this because this is going to be a wonderful testimony. Mark, you're a legend. Uh, what we'll do is I'm going to end this call and then I'll I'll see you in the in the mastermind groups um, in for the well probably the rest of the week. Actually, tomorrow I've got um, I'm a bit out of action because a mate of mine's got a 50th birthday. Oh, can you believe that? 50. I mean, wow. what's that all about? So that's only another that's only another hundred years for us guys that keep ourselves fit. Um, anyway. I shall uh, I shall leave you. Have a great evening in in EST. Where where exactly are you in the states again? I'm in uh, I'm in Florida. In Florida. Florida is uh, the only state. I don't know if you knew this, but this past winter, Florida was the only state in the whole country that had no snow. <laughs> That's the sort of place I like. <laughs> I'm seeing if you could see me here. I mean, I'm in England now. So I'm wearing like a jacket and one, two jumpers and a t-shirt, two pairs. Of, I mean, I'm not actually that cold. I'm quite warm, but I, uh, I, um, because I've lost what forty something pounds in the last twelve months. Um, I'm not used for a long time. Well, literally my whole adult life, I've been sort of between two hundred and five and sort of two hundred fifteen pounds, and nearly all of that stuff was actually quite a good insulator. I'm not just used to that anymore. So actually I'm finding I'm wearing like, you know, four or five times as many clothes as I was wearing. So, um, but you know, I, I don't really mind because I feel as, as you have felt already, just tons of energy all the time. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you're right, it's sort of connecting with a different energy, connecting with a an infinite sort of source of energy that you can pull down on any time. Anyway, before we get too esoteric, I'm going to end the call. Mark, thanks very much. Great privilege, actually, to have done this in front of people as well. I think that's 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 fantastic. So thanks for that. And um, hopefully, over time, we'll build up a library of this, so people can just, if they're interested in anger or, well, or dealing with anger rather than anger um, <laughs> or self sabotage stuff like that, we'll be able to have this all as a repository, so people can just come in and watch this. And uh, I think that'll work really well. So thanks for that, buddy. You have You're a great, great evening. Right. Take care. Bye.